Hi there, you're watching Gardens and Graveyards. My name is Charisma, and this is Spencer. And today we are in our lower garden and we're working on the shade portion of our garden. You saw us go to the Seabright Gardens Hosta Nursery last weekend and we picked up a bunch of hostas. Today is planting day. So we are making some decisions about where those um, plants are gonna go. And I don't know. Hasta Palooza part two. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm gonna flip the camera around and just show you what we have going on and then we'll just get to work. So down here I just brought the tools that I'm gonna be working with. Um using a basic auger. All of my plants are in one gallons. So I'll just use this. I think it's a three inch auger. Um, and we just do like three little holes right next to each other to create a one gallon hole. I've got some gloves. I've got corners in case I run into roots in the ground. I've got a trowel for, you know, extra digging if I need it. Everything will get a little bit of plant tone in the hole. And then in the end, we will um, throw out some slug bait because, oh my goodness, do slugs love hostas. I also have a small rake just to tidy things up at the end, a big shovel in case I need it. I'm not anticipating that. Most of the hostas are going to be in this whole area right here, um, flanking the pathway. This area is a little bit boggy, although we've been amending it with um, organic materials in this bed. And then, of course, we put the rock mulch down to help with some of the moisture control over here. Um, but we do want to fill in this island with dappled, shade-loving plants. So that's what we're going to do um, today. We, of course, do have a ton of um, Crocosmia pops up all through here, so we are attempting to suppress it at all, all the time. Um, and it's spring, so it's time to pull them out again. Um, and that's what Spencer's mostly working on today while I dig holes. Um, you may notice that Spencer's tremor is active today. So he's moving a little bit slower, but he's still out in the sunshine and still gardening because that's what feeds our souls and keeps us healthy. He's going down here. And part's time to pull shade. Like here? Yeah. Yeah. Because it'll show off on the... That's a good, good idea. Good, good thinking. Shade, very large. So put that one on that end. Yeah. Maybe one of these ones in here. If it has some gold tones to it, it might look nice with oh, this. Oh yeah, that's true. And this. That's true. And so this hat, there's a hosta in here, queen of the sea. It has never gotten really, really big. But it's only kind of like so, old. and then there's an astilbe right here. Right, I think so. Yeah, it's true. So, like, right here? Or on, on top of the other hosta? We can bring it out here if you wanted, I guess. Uh, maybe, maybe one over. For huh. one over. Over here. Stained glass hosta here. Stained glass. But that was not those don't get those don't get those don't get very really at all. Fifteen by thirty-six. Okay. Yeah, just a little yeah. That's good. I think that'll be good. 
to bring it out. We could do the opposite. Right, it's corners. Kind of, you know what I mean? You can saw it that way. Saw it in the both edges of the walkway. Well, I do want to put more hookara too. So. Yeah. But we could do opposite corners with the hosta. Yeah, I like that idea. I like it. I think it's a good idea. I mean, or we, and we could do that, and then we could actually plant hookara just, like, as a hedge back here. Right, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Because the hookaras year-round, these go away. Right, that'd be good. These yeah. can show off, and they go away, and then the hookara look good. Yeah. She does, she does. I was reading that slugs don't like hookara, so I'd like to That's kind of nice surround yeah. them. That's kind of, that'd be cool if you use it as a deterrent you know, for the hosses. Yeah, yeah, and I really love how Laura has, like, big drifts of, like, yeah. and even in nurseries when we just see, like, blocks uh -huh. of the different color. Hookara right. looks so pretty. I was thinking if we could just fill these blocks in with right. the different colors, yeah. it'd be really pretty. Yeah. But for, for now, we have enough hosses right now to do every other. Yeah. Fire and ice. Two hours of sun up to two thirds of the day or dappled shade. Up there, does that get any sun? Up yeah, there? yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. does get some sun? Uh, yeah. Okay, then we have blue umbrella, giant hosta, morning and evening sun to full shade. Uh, okay. Would so. that be right behind you? The sea lotus, dappled to full shade. So this should be one of these. Right here, maybe? Oh. <laughs> uh, this no, I think it. Okay. All right. Okay, so we made some decisions about our hosta placement. We're going to go every other um, corner here, for the most part, um, to just soften up these edges a little bit. And then back there, we're going to put a woo -la, la which is one of the biggest hostas there is. And it, it'll be right in front of the Gunnera, right there. Which, you can look at past videos, but that thing gets huge, huge. And then this will get really big and fill in this spot. Which will be really fun. And we'll have like a little, uh, dinosaur, <laughs> uh, landscaping over here. <laughs> and then we bought two, or one mini hosta, but it's really, really full, so I'm gonna divide it and put it in these planters that we planted up a few weeks ago. And then we just have two more down there that uh, we're gonna put along the staircase. I ended up having to dig some of these holes by hand because we chose to plant the hostas in the rock mulch. And the whole point of rock mulch is to prevent weeds from growing. So I didn't want to spit a bunch of dirt up onto the rocks, but I did use my auger to just loosen up the soil and make it nice and fluffy for the roots of the hostas to grow in. Well, I ended up using that shovel for one shovel full, so I'm glad I brought that down with me. The really great thing about all of these hostas were none of them were root bound or root circling. They were all just really beautiful hostas that I was able to remove from their containers and place right in the ground without any disturbance. 
and then put the soil down around it and they settled right in. Okay, so that project took a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, it's late afternoon now, and we started in mid-morning. I think probably like 11-ish we started, and it's after 3. I did take a little break and had a smoothie. But um, all the hostas are planted. I think what took the longest was that two things. We ended up choosing um, sites that were mostly rock and we also were inclined to clean up. It's spring. We haven't been down here in months. So there were some there was some weeding to do and just general cleanup. We have birch trees above us and they are messy. There's um it's called they're called catkins. They look like this. It's the birch tree flower. And they're all over the ground, everywhere. And then they drop little twigs like this, hundreds of them. And so we were raking them out of the beds and off the rock. And um, the rock was placed here um, a year ago and we laid it. We had some used carpet that was given to us to recycle so we laid carpet down and then we laid the rock on top of the carpet and the carpet does two things one um well maybe three things because it recycled the carpet that instead of going to a dump and it suppresses the weeds and it prevents the rock from sinking into the ground we have really sandy soil so anything that we put on t directly on top of the ground without some kind of landscape fabric or a carpet or um, we use cardboard sometimes depending on the bed. Um, but for something like rock, cardboard wouldn't help because it, it'll just, um, it disintegrates and goes away and um, wouldn't hold the rock on top. So instead of spending tons and tons of money on rock that's just going to continually wash into our soil, we put some kind of a barrier to protect that from happening. Um, but that meant I had to rake away, the rock, rake away the rock. Wow. Say that 10 times fast. Um, so I had to move the rock and then I had to cut the carpet and then I had to dig the hole. So it was a bigger process than I was expecting it to be. But um, we're really happy about it. The last thing that I have to do is label everything. So um, I brought a pen and paper down here. I wrote down where all the hostas are because these hostas have um, labels on their container like this. And obviously I can't just leave the containers out here. I mean, I could, but it wouldn't be very attractive. Um, so I need to make labels for the hostas, uh, just because we're not familiar with all the hostas and, you know, it's a good idea to label your plants, especially perennials that go away. So the hostas come up about this time of year and then, um, they get big and they bloom and then they die back and by October, November, there's no plant there at all. It's all underground, so you have no idea it's there. So, um, if you don't remember, <laughs> you have so many plants in your garden that you're not going to remember, um, you've got to label. It's super important, and it really helps you remember which varieties you have because, I mean, we just planted 10 varieties, different varieties, and we have at least half a dozen or maybe more um, varieties already in the garden. So keeping track of what the varieties are is helpful um, when you have a collection of plants. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm just gonna do a little tour from the top to the bottom and show you what we did. So we are at the top of the staircase. 
Um, this is the medicine garden, the front of our house, and then the creek runs back behind these rhododendrons and down through that tree line um, to the back of the property. So this is the area that's like really shady that we are working in right now. Um, this is the top part of the garden. Obviously this is the street and our garden starts here. Um, so the first one we planted was right here at the top of this hill and it is called Fire and Ice and it is um, a white with a dark green margin and it's a medium size and this one the lighter the hosta the more light it can take and so it's going to be in the most sun of all of these hostas. Then we're going to take, we'll walk down the stairs here. The next hosta is right here. This was a mystery hosta. It did not have a label and it was on clearance and of course I had to buy it. So this one gets um, dappled sun to part shade. So we'll see how how it does, if it likes it there or not, because we don't know what it is. Um, it's planted on a hillside, so it'll have plenty of drainage. And then um, coming on down here, we walking down. The other thing that I planted was this bleeding heart. We also got this at Seabright. It is so beautiful. I'm so excited and I'm really loving having it planted with the mondo grass. There's one over here and there is a jugga, um, the chocolate a jugga all in here. Um, so that is really fun. And then this is a snowberry. So it hasn't buried up for me, but I'm curious to see if one of these days it's going to have the little white berries up against these red bleeding hearts. I love this bleeding heart so much. I'm so excited. This is also the area that we allow our horsetail to grow. So you can see a little bit of horsetail in here. Um, it can be invasive, but it is also medicinal. And this is a good space for it to um, go ahead and grow in our garden. So the next hosta that we come to is this one right here. And this is called Blue Umbrellas. It is a giant hosta. It doesn't specifically say how big it is, so I'll have to look that up. It's heavily textured and lightly crinkled. Doesn't say what color. I'm assuming since it's blue, it's probably on that blue hue hosta color. Then we start, this is the first bed that we created in this shade garden. And then this is the second bed that we created with this flowering dogwood in it. And we just decided that we would put hostas in the corners of the pathway. So there's one there, one there, one there, one there, and one over there. And there's room for another one. And I'm sure we'll find more. This one is really fun. It's called Miss Ruby and it's got these beautiful bright green chartreuse leaves and then this really pretty red stem and I've got this purpley burgundy um, perennial there and then of, of course I've got the burgundy shrub back there I think that's gonna be really fun combo um then we have these hostas which is the feather boa it's a dwarf hosta and uh it was so thick in there I was able to divide it and put it in two different pots so we'll see how that works the next hosta that we have, well, technically, we didn't plant these, but 
um, today. But we have a Queen of Sea Hosta here. And you can see her little starts right there. And then we have a Sugar and Spice Hosta right here. And that's not Hosta. This one is um, Stained Glass Hosta. And then up here we have an Abiqua Recluse, which is a metallic gold. So that sounds interesting. So we have that planted right there. And then just a couple steps forward, we've got this. It's a sea lotus leaf. Um, this one is a large hosta. And then next one is the woo la la. It's already starting to bring on its leaves. This one had a tag. You can see what it looks like. It's a Proven Winners Shadowland. Um, really big hosta, 60 inches wide. What's it say? 48 inches tall. So, <laughs> and then that's right in front of the Gunnera. So the, um, the Gunnera gets at least six feet tall. And so this should grow underneath it, even if they kind of overlap each other, it should still be they should still work out pretty good. Turn around. Back at this end of the pathway. And the last one that I'll show you is this guy here. And it is Elegance. And it says it's a very large hosta. Um, frosty blue leaves. Pest resistant. Well, we'll see. Slugs love hostas. So we use Cory's slug and snail killer. Um, very carefully I place them right at the base of the plants um, because I'm extra careful about what kind of slug bait that I use in my garden because our creek is so close by. But um, I haven't found one that specifically says that it's safe for aquatic and amphibians. And we do have frogs and salamanders. So I'm just really careful and I put the bait right close by the plants. I also will put, them, put the bait in big patches of crocosmia. Oh. I can't get it in the sunlight. I put them in patches of like Crocosmia and the Rose Campium because those are the types of plants that are um, slugs like to lay their eggs in. They don't eat them. They don't eat either one of those plants, but they will lay their eggs in them and then, uh, you know, that causes a problem. So I try to put the um, quarries in plants like that as well, even though they aren't getting eaten, um, to prevent slug damage on my other plants. Um, but we've tried all kinds of different ones. We've done the beer thing. We had over 50 jars, like little short jars of beer. <laughs> all over our garden for two years and while it did work and they were full of slugs every single day we were buying a 24 pack of beer every single week to put out for the slugs and we had more slugs than we had ever had before and then I learned that we were actually attracting the slugs and they would travel for up to half a mile um, to get to the yeast and the beer. So uh, that wasn't the best idea. And then we've tried diatomaceous earth, which we didn't see great results with, but we're also in a very wet environment and it's nearly impossible to keep the diatomaceous earth dry and useful. Um, as soon as it gets wet at all, it's, it's completely useless. And our soil is almost always wet, except for like maybe in August. And then 
I mean, it rains every couple of days. It would be just impossible to keep out here. That's probably why we didn't see good results. Sluggo did okay, but we were still really struggling. When we switched over to Corey's, we had beautiful hostas last year. It was the first year that we've ever had that much success. And so we're continuing to use Corey's. There's a new product called Slug Magic by Bonite that I want to try in another area where we just have one hosta um, to see if that works. But they also don't say aquatic safe on their label either. So I don't know if that's even worth doing. Um, yeah. But we're really excited. That's a lot of hostas. And this area is getting really filled and I cannot wait to see in like three months what this space is going to look like. It's going to be amazing.